hope this is the last piece of coronavirus content I ever have to make. I'm telling you, I'm over this thing. It's crazy. I don't want to stand here and do these videos every week about this thing over and over and over and over. And the arguments, keyboard warriors that don't know dick about dick when it comes to health and they want to say, <laughs> this guy's wrong. Okay, cool, whatever, right? We got to change things, everybody. We got to change them. We got to change the focus of this thing. The focus is all wrong. Everything that everybody's focusing on is a complete and utter distraction, right? When you open up your Google app on your phone and you're literally seeing stuff about Trump's name is on checks. <laughs> what? 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 How is this news? What are, we, what are we doing? This is mental, everybody. So, I mean, just if you want to be sheeple and you want to be lemmings, just keep paying attention to what the mainstream feeds you or take some personal responsibility. Change your life for the better. Do it. All right? Anybody got any comments? Let's see what I got over here. Dave, what's up, brother? Thank you so much, man. Dave says, strongly recommend a coaching call with Justin. Huge benefit to everyone on multiple platforms. Just do it. Get better. Yeah. Please do that. Also, uh, just so I say this out loud for the podcast, um, the free ebook is IamClovis.com slash coronavirus. All one word. IamClovis.com slash coronavirus. Guys, I'm not kidding. This thing literally has no strings attached. You go to IamClovis.com slash coronavirus and you download the free ebook. That's it. And then you read it and the information is free. I, I can't understand why this thing doesn't have... 10 billion shares by now. Get out there and share this stuff. It's very, very important, okay? I never, I never scream at you guys to share Clovis content. This is too important, simply too important, right? Sharon, this pandemic is a perfect time to change our lives. I couldn't agree more. I, it's, I'm healthier than I've ever been at this point. Like, I mean, granted, I'm very fortunate. I have a gym in my house. I have an infrared sauna. I have a freezer full of meat. But guess what? I planned my life that way. I built my life that way. Most of that meat in that freezer, I killed and harvested myself. Okay? I know not everybody lives that way, but hey, it sure is paying off for me at this point, everything that I've done here to prepare myself for these things. Deanne, I will be signing up with you tomorrow. Yes, do it. That sounds awesome. Shannon, we've all been taught wrong for so many years. Glad I know better now. Lost 78 pounds. Not worried about my weight. Just want to be healthy. That's fantastic. And yeah, if you have 78 pounds to lose, body weight is a big part of it, right? Body weight's not the end-all be-all, but we got to take care of it when there is obesity um, at play, right? Off all medications, no asthma, sleep apnea, that's fantastic. Congratulations, you're killing the game. That's so cool. Joanna, ha ha ha, I just tuned in and you're talking about standard deviations and I just had a PTSD flashback to my business statistics class. Yeah, that is not my jam either. That's not my world, but I just need people to understand where reference ranges come from. Joanna, just gotta go homeschool my children now. Glad that you're telling it like it is, even though it's somehow unpopular these days to tell the truth, right? Isn't that crazy? Why is it unpopular to tell the truth? What the hell have we gotten into here? All bodies may be beautiful, but obesity is not healthy. Yes, 100%. You can be a beautiful, obese person and not be healthy, okay? I don't know why those things can't be separated, right? Like if I tell somebody, oh man, that person's 100 pounds overweight, they're really not healthy. That could still be a beautiful human being, right? I could think that a, that a female who's 100 pounds overweight is beautiful, also while not thinking she's healthy. I'm not delusional and I'm not dumb, okay? What are we doing? It's crazy. Michelle, it's all exactly as you've been talking about. No surprises at all. Yeah, we've been, I've been saying the same things for over a month now, everybody. It's crazy. The first podcast I did on coronavirus was March 11th, and my message has changed exactly none. Thank you, uh, Michelle, for all the statistics about the ventilators, vitamin D deficiency, and all that stuff. What else we got here? Thank you, Dave, for the comments. Awesome, awesome. Accountability partner. John, favorite quote of the night. Oh, I just lost it. Favorite quote of the night. Keyboard warriors don't know dick about dick. <laughs> Yeah, guys, I'm always just going to be me. Let's be honest. I'm glad that I don't hold some fancy position or some ridiculous PhD credentials where I can get in trouble or lose some license or something. I am so over mainstream academia. It's not even funny. It's mental, right? What else we got? Michelle, I'm terrified of all the even more unhealthy Americans who will come out of shelter in place in so much more danger of getting COVID-19 in the second wind of exposure. It's not going away. A hundred percent. It is not going away. Okay? It's not going away. And people are just getting fatter and sicker and nearly deader. I just invented that term. It totally works. Fatter, sicker, and nearly deader. Right? Alcohol companies, junk food companies, they're killing it on profits right now. It's ridiculous, right? What else we got here? Sharon, Casey Todd is my daughter. Oh, awesome. I love Casey. Super cool. 
I would never have put that together if you didn't tell me that because of the last name, Sharon Roth. Casey lives your way of life. She doesn't preach. She just helped me get my life on track. That's exactly how you got to do it. And like you said, a time of pandemic is a perfect time to change your life, right? But a lot of people don't realize these things. A lot of people are very, very, very stubborn. I have people in my life who I've been living this Clovis lifestyle. Clovis is just the lifestyle I created for myself. I just started sharing it online and that's what Clovis is. Literally, that's it. And, um, you know, I still have people in my life who don't eat anywhere near like I do and they don't do Clovis and right in front of me, they'll cook up nachos and melt cheese on top of them and shove it in their face and don't care at all, right? All I can keep doing is just consistently, consistently, consistently living by example. And now, of course, as I get this information out there, family members start coming to me. Hey, I need help. Hey, I need help. There's one member of my family that the guy has cancer now, right? We're going to talk about that. It's like really... All you can do is live by example. People are all on their own journey, and the more you try to force it, the less it's going to work. When you have a global pandemic, you've got to let the people in your life know that sometimes you have more information than they do, and they need to swallow their pride, and they need to suck it up, right? Like, I always say this. If I'm at a... If I'm sitting at a table full of a dozen people, those dozen people all have strongly held opinions on nutrition, and those dozen people have no idea why they hold those strong positions. Like literally no idea. Have never seen one page of a biochemistry textbook in their entire lives. And they will sit there and they will want to argue with me about nutrition. So if we put this on the flip side, right? If I'm sitting at a table of a dozen people and I'm the only dueling piano player musician sitting at that table, do you think that they're gonna all start telling me the best way to be a dueling piano entertainer? Hey Justin, you know, I've been doing some research and I think that when you're on stage and you're playing Don't Stop Believing, I really think that in the second verse, you should probably do this and you should ask the crowd to sing along and blah, blah, blah. Do people do that? No. But for some reason, when it comes to nutrition, everybody's got a fucking opinion and they don't know why. They have no clue why. The things that people have said to me about nutrition where I literally just close my eyes and take a deep breath and I just kind of smile at myself and go, that's totally cool. Thank you for sharing that with me. And I just move on because it's, I can't even explain to them like what they're trying to do. This would be like if you took a person that doesn't speak Spanish and dropped them into an academic setting in Argentina and said, teach this class. That, that's the equivalent of what you're doing. Like you literally don't even speak the same language and you're trying to tell me what you think about your opinions on nutrition. This is what family and friends do to each other. They all sit at the table, and it's the blind leading the blind. I read this article. I read this article. I read this book. This podcast said this. <laughs> Nobody benefits from that, which is why trying to force family members to change really doesn't work. Guys, I'm the guy teaching you all this information. You have over probably over 250 hours of video for me teaching you about everything from depression to hormones to leaky gut to fitness and everything in between, right? People still do this shit to me. They're, of course, going to do it to you, right? It's crazy. So usually force doesn't work, but in the time of a, of a global pandemic, you got to tell people to sit down and know their place and stay in their lane. You just got to do it. I'm telling you. Aaron, I remember you saying that it is important to drink black coffee after a 13 hour fast before an hour walk to lose fat. Does the coffee need to be caffeinated? I don't tolerate caffeine. Well, well, yes, that's the whole point. Um, so caffeine is a thermogenic. Right? So the reason for that is it speeds up thermogenesis, which is literally the number of calories that your body burns while at rest. So, um, I mean, if you, if you like caffeinated coffee, cool, drink it. Um, I will also say this. There are a lot of people, I have met very, very, very few people um, who don't do particularly well with caffeine. Some people don't, like slow metabolizers of caffeine and everything. More often than not, what I find is that people drink really shitty coffee and they have a bad response to coffee. I actually talked about this with Anthony J. Certain really crappy coffee can cause an immune response in individuals for up to 48 hours. They can have this shakiness and jitteriness even long after the caffeine's out of their system. Like caffeine can stay in your bloodstream for like a maximum of 12 hours, right? Some people will drink one cup of coffee and 48 hours later they're having poor, you know, they're having poor symptoms or whatever. And they're like, oh my God, that caffeine just killed me. Where if you were to draw their blood, there'd be no caffeine in their system. It's actually an issue with really crappy coffee or mold toxins or whatever kind of junk you can find in coffee. Like, don't just go out and drink Folgers coffee or God forbid, don't drink Keurig coffee. Think about it. You're sending piping hot water through melting plastic and drinking it in a cup. And then people feel crappy after that. And they're like, oh yeah, I have um, coffee. I don't do well with caffeine. That's a weird association. You, you might not know that you don't do well with caffeine. I mean, you could literally buy caffeine pills and take a couple of them and see how you do. 
um, just for the experiment, right? And now I'm not saying you don't react poorly to coffee. Plenty of people react poorly to coffee as well, right? Plenty of, plenty of people, people react poorly to caffeine and coffee. So you very well might, but it's something to consider, right? Something people don't think about a lot. But after a 13 hour fast, if you drink a cup of black coffee and then you go out and take a walk, you're gonna be burning more calories than you would have without that coffee in your system. Then get back, hop in a nice cold shower, fat burning furnace. That is a great little low hanging fruit fat burning hack for everybody out there if you wanna burn some fat. All right, what else we got? Michelle, media, marketing, we are saturated with very bad information. We have TV shows made for drama, teaching people about health and nutrition. It's fucking maddening, yes, 100%. I don't know what else, I really don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, you know? I really don't, um, because you have the people at the highest levels, the Fauci's of the world, and you have to understand, like, I, I, it's highly doubtful to me. You're dealing with a massive inflammatory response from COVID-19, and you're dealing with chronic metabolic conditions, as you guys saw, as I outlined tonight. And I am quite sure that if you were to sit Fauci down and ask him how systemic inflammation happens and how leaky gut happens and how to fix it, I bet you he wouldn't know what you're talking about. I could be totally wrong about that. If I met Fauci, maybe I'd be wrong about that. But I'd be willing to bet that the higher you go up in the world of academia and this just blinders folk and these people, these people that are specialized knowledge, like I tell you, specialization is for insects. It's not for humans. You want to be a doctor, you better know endocrinology, you better know immunology, you better know all uh, how to read a comprehensive metabolic panel, you better understand cholesterol, you better understand fitness, you better understand environmental hormesis, all these things. But we live in this world, as Michelle will know, where you have a specialist for everything. Specialist in this, specialist in that, specialist in this, and they don't talk to one another, they treat the body as one thing, right? Uh, as one specific part, they don't treat the body as a holistic thing. It's ridiculous. This is what we've got to. The top experts in the world, their heads are up their asses farther than anybody else's. It's crazy. And they don't even realize it. And they're not even willing to, to think for one second that that could be the case. That's the real problem that we get into here. It's crazy. Dave, have you done the Biome 7 Day Cleanse or just the Pro and Prebiotics? Yes, I've tried every uh, Biome product under the sun. Just so you guys know, like every everything that I ever suggest to you or show to you as a product I have tried and vetted. I probably know the manufacturer myself. I probably know the owner of the company and I probably know the manufacturing facility that makes that product. So yes, I've done the Biome 7 Day Cleanse. Paul, uh, Dave, you're probably, sorry, where did Paul come from? But Dave, you're probably referring to um, the recommended supplements that I sent you. Just so you guys know, if you're a member of I Am Clovis, there's a recommended supplements list and I have recommended supplements, particularly for something called leaky gut. Um, and there's Biome 7 Day Cleanse in there. And yes, I have tried that product. Um, I don't like the word cleanse, just so you know, but you know, everybody's like, it's like me with Perfect Paleo Powder. I have to say certain things like, oh, this is a fat loss formula because otherwise people won't buy it, right? So you have to use these catchy words like cleanse and all that. I don't like the word cleanse. It's just, it's a silly word, right? Do you advise Element Electrolytes? I love Element Electrolytes. Yes, 100%. Rob Wolf is a dear, dear friend of mine. Um, I have... Element electrolytes sitting right over there on the kitchen table. Um, I'm a, and I'm a firm believer in them. I love them. Absolutely love them. I tend to just make my own electrolyte drink with sodium, potassium, magnesium. I make my own drink each morning. When I'm traveling, I always have Element electrolytes with me. Always my professional MMA fighter. I am a uh, nutrition coach for a professional MMA fighter named Pauline Petermasius. She's now sponsored by Element. She's an ambassador of Element. Fantastic product. Um, but I will let you know from a jump that uh, Clovis is launching an electrolyte product. I will have my own electrolyte product that you can buy from me. Um, so I would definitely recommend that one when the time comes, but we're probably a few weeks out from that. So there will be a product in the future called Clovis Essential Electrolytes, and it will be amazing because I have them here and I drink them and they're amazing. So <laughs> it's pretty freaking awesome, I'm excited. But anyway, uh, it's, what is it, 9, 9, 10 now? So thank you guys for hanging around. This is AMA 110. I hope this was very helpful. Um, I wanted to just kind of talk about general health before we drop the bomb of coronavirus and COVID and all this stuff. So uh, really, really glad that you guys were here for this. Thank you so much. Thank you for the meaningful comments. Thank you very much. And please share, share, share right now. Like literally, click the share button, click the like button, click the love button, click the happy face button, click all those buttons. Aaron, no, electrolytes should be used every single day. I cannot express to you the importance of electrolytes in human just basic functioning. I, I do not go a day without electrolytes. That's why I travel with them. When I travel, I take in even more electrolytes. Um, yeah, I take in far, far, far more electrolytes than 
mainstream would tell you to take in, I probably take, take in 7,000 milligrams of sodium a day. And I'm not talking about sodium chloride, which would be table salt. I'm taking in probably 14 grams of sodium chloride table salt to get that 7,000 grams of sodium, 7,000 milligrams of sodium, right? So every day, every single day, I promise you, your life will change for the better. Aaron, just take them every day. Hit them every day. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it depends. If, you, if you're if you gonna exercise, yeah, maybe take some before exercise, maybe take some after exercise. I take them first thing in the morning. I, t I get I get 1,500 milligrams of sodium first thing in the morning immediately. I get um, three grams of, uh, what do I do? I weigh out three grams of salt, three grams of magnesium, and one gram of potassium first thing in the morning. Um, I take electrolytes all throughout the day. Every time I have a glass of water, I sprinkle salt in it. I mean, I salt all of my food. Whatever you think you're doing for electrolytes, times it by five. There you go. That's <laughs> Generally speaking, people do not have electrolytes in their lives. It's a huge problem. It's a huge, huge problem, particularly when people are switching to a low carbohydrate diet. Um, that's most of the reason for the keto flu detox. People think it's a sugar detox. It's mostly an electrolyte deficiency. So load up on them, I'm telling you. I'm Justin, I'm out. Be safe.